beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. I know you in Jesus' name. Are you ready for tonight? Please pray in one minute. Lord, I am ready for your word. Let it come to bless. Let it come to change. Let it come to transform. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Bible says, and we all with unveiled face, we behold as in a mirror the glory of God. And then the Bible says we are changed, we are transformed from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of God. It says they grow from strength to strength. As many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight's teaching is a very powerful one, and I believe that this will be a very strong spiritual arsenal that you will want to add to the many arsenals that god has granted us access to here remember that our victory in this kingdom within the time and the dispensation that we have to serve the purposes of god is predicated upon the sufficiency of our equipping hallelujah that means that we must sustain the ability to access every spiritual arsenal within our disposal because our lifetime will necessitate one or more of these arsenals and so every time we come before god we must listen for a dimension of truth that will be given to us that will be useful for our destinies hallelujah it's amazing that we're already in november i was thinking about it today and i said can you imagine truly how time flies this is november 2019 january this year and every year is about the most motivated year uh, or motivated months for many people they are inspired challenged pressed to do a lot of things and many times by the time we get to september october november most people are already gassing out and um, so the lord inspired a very powerful teaching in my heart that i believe will bless us in no small way in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I want to teach on the concept of strength. 
um, it is very powerful what I want to share because these are the kinds of teachings that are applicable to all and sundry. These are the teachings that we will need for the now and also in the future. Um, the goal is to open us up to a very thorough understanding of strength and the role that it plays in a believer's life in his accomplishing the purposes of God. The Bible very clearly reveals scattered through scripture that strength is the fuel of destiny. Please listen very carefully. The Bible reveals again and again that when people get to the end of their destinies, it is proof that they accessed sufficient strength. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is a very important thing. Ephesians chapter 3, please. Verse 16. The whole text runs to 21, but we'll just pick one scripture. One verse, 16. Ephesians 3, please help us. Paul is praying and speaking to the church in Ephesus. And he said that he would grant you, Paul is asking the Lord to grant unto the church, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. It's a very powerful prayer. The apostle is praying for a people who would later go through all kinds of things. The, the oppression that would come from Emperor Nero and others who would come and attack the gospel. He was praying for a people who some of them would be martyred in their lives. He was praying for people who sometimes would lose their lives for the gospel. And he said, listen, I pray that you be strengthened not in your arm in your inner man by the spirit and so we need a lot of strength for the journey of destiny proverbs chapter 21 please proverbs chapter 21 continues to emphasize the need for strength in a believer's journey 21 proverbs 24 i beg your pardon verse 10 Proverbs 24 verse 10. It says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, the diagnosis is that what? Your strength is small. Modern cars, very modern cars are so equipped that when the fuel is getting to reserve, certain features that use the fuel will minimize or stop working. Is that true? The AC may be minimized, the capacity as proof that the fuel is going down. And when you refill it again, you find out that all of those futures are back. It's a system of conserving what is left so that the car will not die. And the Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. The first revelation I want you to get is that among the many days in a man's life, there is a day called the day of adversity. Jesus said, this is your hour and the power of darkness. It's a message to strengthen the body of Christ because for many people, our lives and our experiences have not been exactly the best in the midst of all the joy and the celebration there are people right now who have been bereaved there are people right now who um, have lost jobs have lost opportunities i got a text um i think this afternoon or so while i was praying about a family who had been praying for a dead corpse for a few days still believing that that dead body will come back to life. Now, it's very difficult to teach these kinds of things because believers, um, it is not in, in our normal human, um, it is not a normal desire to want to admit that days like this are part of the days in a man's life. It is difficult for you to think that a day can come when you will stand before a corpse 
of your loved one. It is difficult for you to think that one day you will stand and watch your eviction letter from a landlord. Everybody wants to be positive. Everybody wants to move forward. It is difficult for you to stand and then get a doctor's report that you thought your wife was pregnant and she wasn't pregnant. It is difficult to get a report that tells you you have cancer and the cancer is dying, your kidney has failed and all of that. And most believers are not mentored into the spiritual system allocated by which the saints remain strong. Are we blessed? Yes. This is the reason why several people, when they confront challenges in their lives, when they confront things that negate their faith, when their prayers and their expectations don't come to pass, many are discouraged, many are depressed, many leave God, many even die. Tonight's message will bless you in no small way and add it to the spiritual archives of your life because for as long as you live, you will need it one day. Hallelujah. As a man of God, I've had the privilege to weep with many families who have lost their loved ones. People have lost jobs. People have celebrated. People have done all kinds of things. And sometimes it's very difficult to let believers see. And sometimes we preachers, especially for us that God has granted grace to walk in the miraculous and to walk in the truths of the word of God, it's difficult to also create space in our teaching where we help people understand that it is not unusual when believers pass through turbulent times in their lives and their family. It's usually not a message that is very accepted. It is not pleasant. And so when the believer is now sick, when the person now has an accident, when something happens, it becomes difficult to explain. Are we blessed? If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Hallelujah. Psalms 46 and then verse 1 to 3. Please write it down. Psalm 46 verse 1 and 3. Look up while I read. It says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Verse 2. It says, though therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed. Now, I don't know what the psalmist was thinking in his mind. <laughs> but I'm a very creative person. When I read the Bible, I take it seriously. Though the earth be removed. Do you know what that means? That the earth is removed. Then we stand on what? <laughs> Are we together now? It says, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Verse 3. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. It says, God is our refuge and our strength. One more scripture. And then we'll discuss a few things. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Paul is speaking to the church in Philippi. And this is what he says. I can do all things. But he says I can only do them through the strength that Christ gives. It takes strength to do all things. It takes strength to build a house. It takes strength to build a company. It takes strength to build a marriage. It takes strength to build your spiritual life. It takes strength to go from glory to glory. And Paul is saying, I can only do all things by the strength that Christ supplies. That means outside of that strength, I may not be able to do many things that my destiny require. This is very important. These scriptures all show us that believers need strength. Everybody says strength. In fact, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32, it says, but the people, the B part now, that do know their God, one of the rewards for knowing God in a believer's life is strength. Hallelujah. Strength. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. It takes a while 
for the word of God to prevail over a man's life for results to begin to be produced it takes a while for church to grow it takes a while for the business to grow that staying power to push and to remain until the word prevails is what many believers lack and sadly sometimes we preachers in a bit to challenge and encourage people we continue to make people feel that the moment the word of god does not work immediately something may be wrong with your faith so when the person cannot pay his or her rent, once the person cannot pay his or her bills, sometimes they get, um, they get into that mold that begin to suggest that they do not love God. It is not so. Strength is required. It is a finisher's requirement in this kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's discuss the concept of weariness. I studied this and it blessed me in no small way. The Bible lets us know that men can be weary. That the moment you are a mortal man on earth, the possibility of exhaustion, the possibility of discouragement, the possibility of being depressed by the vicissitudes of life is something that can always catch up with you are we together now psalm 23 from verse 1 and verse 3 the reality of weariness psalm 23 it says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want and then when you go to verse 2 he says he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters the revelation is in verse 3 he restored my soul that means the soul of a man can need restoration the same way your body needs rest a time can come you are fagged out by all the things that happen in life all men can be weary pay attention to this revelation it is a very powerful one isaiah chapter 40 popular scripture from verse 29 in fact let's start from verse 28 it says has thou not known has thou not heard 40 28 that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainted not neither is he weary so he's talking about weariness he says there is no searching of his understanding 29 he says he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increased strength are we together now so this scripture show that men can be weary one time jesus carrying the burden of the cross he got to gethsemane and the bible says that he prayed and the prayer was like drops of blood and then from thence he carried the cross and on his way to golgotha at a point he fell down with the cross to the point that they had to get a man called simon of cyrene the nigger to help him leave the cross otherwise he would not be able to get to golgotha are we together now yes Moses was weary one time and he said Lord I don't know the kind of people you have anointed me to lead these people are stiff necked people right now I tell them God is saying this they rejoice tomorrow they stand before the sea and they point to me and say Moses you are the reason we would have eaten cucumber and, and locust and all of that at least it was better now you are taking us to a supposed promised land we are standing before the Red Sea and Moses said Lord you know what please come and handle this your people so men can be weary Elijah the prophet when a woman was pursuing him he ran one time and hid and then he didn't know what to do with his life and the guy was tired Jonah's own was even a disturbing situation because Jonah literally knowing that a man cannot run away from God Jonah opted to run and Jonah's running was legitimate. Why was it legitimate? He said, God, I know you are a merciful God. After these wicked people finish punishing me, I now go and preach. They will fast, they will repent, and you will act. You are wasting my time so that I will become the scapegoat. And Jonah was on his way. He now entered a boat, caused trouble in the boat, and the people casted lots, and they said, you know what? We are going to throw this man out. And then right he goes to the belly of the fish. 
men can be weary. Elijah was receiving supernatural supplies at Bukcherif. One day the Bible says the brook dried. Hmm. The brook dried. So the reality of the weariness of men is something that we must get used to it. Listen, believers can be exhausted. Know this and let it be factored in your Christian experience as you walk with God. That it is not unspiritual to get to a point in your life where you become exhausted. You can be exhausted over your children's school fees. A parent one day can look at his child and say, ah, why, why did these children, how did I even allow these children come? And sometimes you feel guilty and you feel bad. It is the reality of weariness. Are we together now? Yes. House rent. They slash your salary by half. They increase your salary by, they increase your house rent by double. And you stand before your landlord and you don't know what to tell him. What sermon do I now preach to this man? My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you this. When believers become wary, we must sustain the intelligence on how to navigate. You are a man of God, you are anointed, but nobody is placing a demand on your grace. Hmm. You go to a crusade and finish preaching, you make an altar call after three hours of preaching and only two people stroll out. As though they are pitying you. They just stroll out and stand. And you ask them to pray the salvation prayer. They don't even pray it. And you stand there. Lord, did you call me? Or what, what is If you didn't call me, just tell me. I will politely look for something else to do. Men can be very, very wary. I remember one time, a particular gentleman was preparing for his, his marriage. And... Um, you know, God will make a way, pushing things. And then a point got, it became Kai. Apostle, I said, just, just push forward. There is grace. I mean, the finisher's anointing is a possibility in the kingdom. <laughs> but honestly speaking, he got to a point where it was about one week to the wedding. And uh, the bills were a mountain that were refusing to move. And everybody can prophesy and say, I saw your wedding happening already. But it's true in the realm of the spirit. But now, the possibilities to make it happen in the physical realm didn't seem to be there. And up until four or so days, I remember having to call the gentleman and to encourage him and to say, look, don't worry. God is faithful. There is God that sits in the heavens. Many years ago, another gentleman was preparing for his marriage and three days to the wedding he refused to go to the city where he would get married yes i mean he just had to just lord i don't know what you would do with me but it's three days to my marriage there are bills house rent i've seen it squash people ministry when you have a crowd of people five thousand ten thousand and then everything begins to go down and you can barely have 500 what happens when these kinds of seasons come in your life praise the lord so weariness is a reality with all men and this is why we need strength now i have identified from scripture two major causes of weariness please pay attention there are two major causes that can make believers any individual to be wary number one according to scripture is hope deferred proverbs chapter 13 please and verse 12 give it to us media let's hurry up hope deferred the bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick but when the desire comet it is a tree that can minister life so one of the reasons why people can be exhausted one of the reasons why people can be um, discouraged and broken is prolonged expectation. Listen very carefully. Hope deferred can literally make the heart. The word heart there is spirit. The Bible says a man's spirit can break, not just a human body. If your body is broken, the doctor can treat it. If your soul is broken, a therapist can psychologically manage you but when your spirit is broken the bible says no man is able to bear it 
are we together now hope deferred results that you expect in your life do not come you expected that at age 30 you would have built a house you expected that by the time you have four children you should be financially free you expected that by the time you are 10 years in ministry you should be established and have membership when hope is deferred it can torture the heart are we blessed the number one reason why believers get worried let me tell you this we are beings of results let me use you and we desire advancement everybody say advancement this gentleman there is an instinct in him to continue to make progress that means that this year or this month next year or next month there should be progress by the time an individual is caused whether by life or whatever it is to either retrograde or stagnate it is dangerous the bible says it can do something to you that no man can bear are, are we together now yes there are people who you know reach me and send me text messages and say apostle i am tired and frustrated i've been in ministry you know when this brother was sharing his testimony i sat back there and i was just nodding my head because it is painful when you tell people the call of god is upon your life and there are no results to testify results are powerful results validate many things among them that you are operating by laws correctly among them that you are in the will of god so when results when your life is barren of results it can do something to your heart hallelujah praise the lord i once prayed with a family that were trusting god for a miracle for their child they had a child but the child had a condition that was a very serious thorn in the flesh for the family very young boy i mean he could go wild and even injure his siblings very blessed man but that thing was just there and i remember when i wanted to pray for them and i was encouraging them um i closed my eyes to pray and then i opened my eyes and i saw the man still looking at me now you may laugh it's not unbelief it is what weariness can do to the spirit how many of you have gone to several men of god for prayer they've prayed and prophesied and said it is done and then the next time i see it here sometimes when i'm praying for people on the queue oh lord i pray that and, and the person you you know he's just looking at you and just saying look just finish this prayer and let me go Lazarus had been there three days and when Jesus came he said I know in the resurrection when everything is gone you know I've told you that I've been kept a few times in the mortuary alone to pray for dead bodies and it's an experience that is quite interesting because you will stretch your faith and watch a dead body immovable sometimes already embalmed and you don't know what to do there you end up thinking about your own life in that in that mortuary i mean that's the most profitable thing you can do because the body is if you tell someone stand up from a wheelchair at least he can move his leg it's just that the leg is not strong but you speak to a dead body and you are even afraid of a dead body answering are we together if the dead body actually answers remember the door is closed for security reason blessed be god hope deferred financial expectations especially now in africa and nigeria my god the way this finance thing is doing people and the kinds of depression depression that someone can just stand by the road and just look at life and take a deep breath go home sit on a chair and die nothing exactly wrong just the reality of life hallelujah so we are beings of results and we are beings of progress and the moment your life listen 
cannot attain unto certain levels of progress within an appreciable period of time, it is true that weariness can set in. The first reason, hope deferred, prolonged expectations. The second reason from scripture why weariness sets into the lives and the destinies of people is called sorrow. Write it down, please. Sorrow. Sorrow. Are we together? What is sorrow? A feeling of deep distress. A feeling of deep distress that is caused by losses, caused by disappointments, caused by misfortune. A feeling of deep, dis deep distress caused by loss could be loss of a loved one, could be loss of a job, could be disappointment. You expected admission, like some of you probably. You expected the final year result to come out with you completely done and now you are seeing an extra year there sorrow and sorrow has symptoms let me list for you two or three of them number one is sadness you can interpret sorrow by the sadness that is in the heart of a man number two you can interpret sorrow or you can discern sorrow by depression human beings just become depressed they have no inspiration to aspire at life again. Nothing is ever worth their energy or strength. Sorrow. Rise up, let's pray again. It's no use. Rise up, let's build a company again. It's no use. Rise up as the one who is now left to take care of your siblings. It's no use. Sadness, depression, downheartedness. I have met very discouraged, uninspired people in this life. And I've been shocked and broken by their approach to life. They can be on the road passing and a car is honing. And it makes no difference to them whether they die or leave. As far as they are concerned, they are dead. There are people like that. An example of such a person was Mephibosheth in the Bible. Mephibosheth had to come to terms with the reality of his being crippled and the fact that he would never have the opportunity to make any good out of his life again i hope you understand that in the days of mephibosheth there was no technology to draw inspiration from anybody that guy was left there so when king david sent for him hear his response oh king what do you have to do with a dog when a man calls himself a dog, let me tell you, one of the characteristics of sorrow is you begin to name yourselves what God did not call you. Life can push you down to a point where you start calling yourself what God has not called you. I am good for nothing. You can tell yourself. I cannot amount to anything. I am the worst in my family, you hear people say. I am the black sheep. No inspiration to aspire for a life that is great. People admit defeat and sit back there. And then before you know it, their lives fold. Because they do not sustain a superior revelation again. There are people who have packed up ministry. And just said, you know what? This ministry thing, I quit. It's over. I've tried there are people who have packed up businesses after failing 10 15 times they just say you know what i've done my best there are people who have given up on their children i'm sorry i can't pay your school fees i can't take care of you do whatever you want to do with your life sorrow is a very serious thing i've had the opportunity to comfort families that have lost loved ones and sometimes no matter what you are saying the mother or the father is just looking at you they want to believe what you are saying they hope one day they will believe it but for that moment they don't are we together yes 
I think the admission list just came out or so for, I think, ABU or I don't know which of the institutions. And there were people who probably didn't get admission in the list that was released. And some of them continued. I, I read some of their text messages and honestly, tears were almost coming to my eyes. Because some of them said, Apostle, 11 years. Apostle, 7 years. Apostle, this one, this one. Sorrow is a reason why weariness can eat a man like a cancer and you become a shadow of yourself because you are sorrowful. So hope deferred and sorrow are two biblical causes of the weariness in men. No wonder our world today is filled with depressed men. Medical people will tell you the volumes of drugs that are consumed, especially by men. Do you know why? Because the inability to be able to provide, the inability to be able to be there, sometimes can so discourage the man he stands and says, well, I know I'm good for nothing. I know I'm not able to take care of my wife and family. And because of that, they draw conclusions. And like Mephibosheth, even when the king is calling, they say, don't call a dog, call men. I am a dog. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. You made me royalty, but I choose to serve. Serve you with my life. Serve you with my worship. You made me to see that your right hand, but I choose to bow, bow in worship, bow in worship. You made me royalty, but I choose to serve, to serve you with my life, to serve you in worship. You made me to sit at your right hand, but I choose to bow, to bow in worship, bow in worship. There are times that you're reducing yourself is to honor God, but there are times that reducing yourself is because life has made you so. Life has beaten you to a point where you do not see that you can stand again. There are times when you are a king but you put your golden crown so that you will worship. But there are times it is not worship. It is just life that has hit you down. There are times you go on your knees because you are worshiping God. But there are times you go on your knees because you do not see any hope in life again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. You made me royalty, but I choose to serve, to serve you with my life, to serve you in worship. You made me to sit at your right hand, but I choose to bow, but I choose to bow. Bow my heart. I will never forget many years ago when one of our precious ones in this ministry went to be with the Lord. She was a leader, served God with all her heart, loved God. She was so dear to me, I loved her with my whole heart. And she quickly just went to do something and returned back. And I remember I was counseling someone. When a call comes to me, and then my attention is needed. And then they break the news that this my most precious, precious daughter has transited to go to be with the Lord. I remember how I thought about it and I said, oh boy. I remember when God granted me the privilege to visit with the family 
and I held the mother and the mother began to sing and the mother began to encourage us and the mother began to rejoice I said stamina that's what it's called you know a man's level of spiritual dexterity not when things are happening but sometimes it's when nothing is happening do you have the staying power when the word of the Lord is yet to come through in your life do you have the staying power when the church has not opened up do you have the staying power when you are fasting and praying and the anointing does not seem to come upon your head you watch all your colleagues and contemporaries already walking in certain dimensions but for you it is not there you watch all your colleagues with jobs some of them becoming managers and here you are after 15 17 years you are still looking for a job weariness sorrow can set in hallelujah are we together now yes let me teach you very quickly before we pray how to be strengthened in this kingdom i show you keys that you will hold and your life will remain an unending wonder i show you keys that you will hold and you will defeat life and beat it at its game hmm. how to be strengthened number one the first key to draw strength in this kingdom is the revelation of the love of God write it down the first key that is allocated by which we draw strength from in this kingdom is the revelation of the love of God first John chapter 3 and verse 1 we'll look at a few scriptures very quickly first John chapter 3 and verse 1 behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not behold what manner of love let me tell you something the revelation of the love of God is therapeutic is a wonder that when you stand and look at life and the awareness that the monarch of the universe has invested his love upon you is a revelation that if understood can change your life hallelujah people have received calls from presidents people have received calls from diplomats i've had a few calls in my life from great people prominent people and i can tell the excitement in my heart wow this person that person was able to reach out to me i mean it, it's very comforting and blessing when the great reach out to you it does something that is comforting and healing and then the monarch of the universe looks down on you no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. It's a revelation you must have. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. is found in Jeremiah 31 and verse 3 powerful revelation 
in a world of wickedness in a world of selfishness in a world that is governed by interest it is a revelation to know jeremiah what did i say chapter please search for me i hope we got it right i have loved thee with an everlasting love that's right therefore with loving kindness have i drawn thee it's a revelation after the grace this my adorable children will be here lined up to give me a wonderful hug and how i've so missed them and every time i hug every one of these children i look at their eyes and i see the confidence they have in fatherhood this is what the bible is saying i have loved thee do you know what it means to have an everlasting love i have loved thee with an everlasting love ha huh. this is the god of heaven believers hear me you will draw strength for the journey for your ministry for your life for your children when you understand this it is true would you dance with me your love of my soul to the song of all songs preacher hear me businessman hear me dance with me Of my soul to the song of all songs. Powerful revelation. The Bible says in First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine that eyes have not seen. Koinonia, hear me. God is comforting someone. Yes, have not heard. Neither has it been revealed to the heart of any man what God has in store for them that love him. There is a dealing with God that is in the realm of lovers. That God loves you so much he can sit down and think about you and plan something for your life that will make you a wonder and a shock. Please do not forget that when it comes to the sovereignty of God, God is not a man. It's a revelation I want you to hear. God is not limited by the limitations of men. Men are limited in knowledge. Men are limited in time. Men are limited in strength. But there is one who is called the monarch of the universe. And that when he decides to stand up and bless you and lift you, he will supply the strength and he will lift you the same way you press a button and a lift begins to rise. Is someone being edified tonight? The revelation of the love of God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 says, For we know we are privy to an information in the, in the kingdom. We know that all things, not some things, all things work together please hear me you lost a loved one i know it is painful but hear me you lost money you lost business your expectations disappointed let me tell you we know they may not know but we know that all things work together for good to them that love god and to them who are the call everything in a man's life is navigated by the love of God to square up to purpose and destiny. This is the wonder of the love of God. Hallelujah. Mm. Moses ran away from the, the Egyptians and he went to the backside of the mountain. Thinking he was running away from Egypt, he did not know he was running to the place of encounter where he will meet the burning bush. very powerful it's amazing how God navigates men through the path of destiny it's amazing how many times you don't even know you are led yet you are led 
in the midst of your confusion the finger of the ancient of days is upon you in the midst of your cluelessness about life yet he is guiding you by his spirit and then when you see the wonder of his intelligence you will stand back and join people and say you are truly the monarch of the universe I have seen this with my life this is how koinonia started i have seen this at different seasons of my life let me tell you something do not stand the way of the wisdom of god over a man that he loves do not stand the way of the wisdom of god the intelligence of god is so thorough he ensures that you win the love of god everybody say the love of god let it be a revelation that is in your heart don't give room and allow the devil to take advantage of your life and spy upon your liberty no stand in the strength of the revelation of the love of god for we know look at this one day you will need this scripture sooner or later for we know man of god hear me for we know businessman father for we know apostle i lost my father and my mother this year i know it is painful it doesn't make sense but watch the intelligence of the one who designed the heavens and the earth listen anytime your life looks clueless tell yourself keep watching i've never had the opportunity to be okay well i had once i'm confessing now once in a drama group when i was in primary school so fortunate i acted a rich man i will never tell you the name i know how bad you people are you will not forget the name when i say it. they called me a wonderful name they gave me pieces of paper and leaves i was a politician in that drama i would spray money and people would clap for me and so on and so forth that was the only time i remember okay well and then a few other christmas dramas here and there but there's something i know about acting that there is someone called a movie director the movie director is the one invested with the intelligence of producing that movie sometimes the actors do not even understand the stretch they just know that in that movie you are acting you you die in, in jesus name sam is refusing you, you will not die in jesus name are we together now yes do you know what it means to be mindful of a man that means you sit down and invest your thought to understand this you must understand architecture while you are talking to an architect he's thinking okay so what do you want i want a house let me prophesy someone's house already i want oh, sit down sit down carnal people we are dealing with serious issues this night are we together and you are telling the architect okay i need it a duplex i need three parlors one for business one for family one for this i need a kitchen as large as a living room i need this and while you are describing it the architect watch this the architect is intelligently he's he's adding imagery to what you are saying and even things you want that you don't know by reason of his experience he now he's 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 filtering your amateur communication and he's adding his intelligence on it this is what this guy meant to say while you are talking your heart too is talking and he's listening to both of them and capturing them in the design of that house when he's done and he brings you and you stand you say if i were to draw it it would not look like this beauty glory elegance this is what the bible means that when god sits down in designing your destiny he designs it thoroughly with his intelligence he designs it in such a way that insists that you arrive have you seen architects design buildings and later on they find out that ah this soil the topography is not conducive and they say no problem they have to make adjustments but that building must come out I'm speaking to someone in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the blueprint and the design for your destiny it must be actualized in your lifetime in the name of Jesus the son of the living God please sit down sit down every building does not look like it till it's finished every preacher does not look like it till God is done with him every worshiper does not look like it 
Everybody say the love of God. It's a powerful revelation. That God loves me. You know, I have, I think in the last, I don't know how many years now, it has become a deep revelation. Some, sometimes, I think in life, eh, as you grow in ministry, in leadership, and in age, certain truths of scripture begin to crystallize in you again. Are, are we getting blessed? Please settle with the love of God. Because there are some of you here, look at me. Your fathers, your mothers, your loved ones, and everybody has concluded about you. And you may not know the effect of that thing in your life until you get to a point where you just say, can anything good come out of Nazareth but the love of God? Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me. Listen, listen to what you are singing. Oh, it chases me down. Fight till I'm found. Leaves the 99. That's strange. I couldn't earn it. And I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Look what God is doing in this ministry. Look what God is doing in our lives. I continue to watch people as they grow in the spirit. I continue to watch people transit like from egg, lava, pupa, adult. From a little shrub, God is making many of us to become giants. It does not look like it, but be patient with God. And watch the wisdom, I say it again, of the ancient of days. It's a name he has to himself. The revelation of the love of God. Let's hurry up so that we can pray. Number two. The second way to be comforted. The second way to be strengthened. As a believer. Is the comfort of scripture. Please write it down. Make sure you are writing. Number one is the revelation of the love of God. How we are strengthened. Number two is the comfort of scripture. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Romans 15, please, and verse 4. Look up, please, if you can. And let's read together. One, two, read. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, uh -huh, that we through patience and comfort of Scripture might find hope. Do you know what this means? Let me interpret this to you. The meaning of this is that there is nothing new under the sun and that the Bible has captured different experiences that can play in your life and has already given you a preview of how the end looks like. So that by the comfort of scripture, when for instance you are bereaved, you may not know if tomorrow will ever come, but you can open scripture and see someone who was bereaved and see how the person survived after it and you would draw strength from it. It's not called scripture. It's called the comfort of scripture. Joe was a man in the Bible who is a classic example of a man going down to the lowest and rising back to the highest. Job in one day I'm not sure any man on earth has gone through that kind of experience in one day a man loses his daughters in one day a man loses his sons in one day a man loses his estates and his businesses in one day a man loses all of this and then before Job will finish coping with the sheer stress his health is now affected boils begin to come dogs will come and lick the boils of Job. Many saw Job and said, oh dear, once great Job. And here he's sitting only with the comfort of his wife. And watch this. God began to make a boast of Job in the heavenlies. And by the time we get to chapter 42, hallelujah, the Bible says, verse 10, that and God restored the fortunes of Job suddenly people began to come from everywhere and bring gift and the bible said all of them held a bag of money and gave him 
let me speak to someone the concept of things being over is not real did you hear what i said there is no such thing as it is over with god god can the worst thing that can happen is death resurrection is proof that god has conquered the power of death hallelujah please find your dream alive find your anointing alive get back and open the books that you wrote visions i will be a great worshiper i will sing to the nations men may not invite me now but in the name of jesus i find comfort in scripture that for a long time david was in the wilderness but a day came he appeared before saul your soul will call you for sure one day so david continue to learn how to play they may not invite you but stay until the season of appearing comes it is true apostle we've been trusting god for the fruit of the womb 10 years 15 years through the comfort of scripture god refers you to go to the patriarch father abraham and see what 25 years of endurance produced and when abraham finally held isaac they laughed and said all who hear will laugh with me lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why i will lift up my voice and sing yeah, yeah. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace undeniable. There's no need to cry cause you're always with me. You're my father, my every Psalms 119 verse 28. Please sit down. Want us to pray tonight? Psalms 119 verse 28. Please make sure you are writing these scriptures. You can comfort someone with it after service. You can minister to your family member. You can go and fast with this scripture and pray. My soul melted for heaviness. It says strengthen thou me according to your word use your word to strengthen me i cannot pay the rent now but use your word to strengthen me use your word to strengthen me i don't know where the finances will come from use your word to strengthen me my mother has been diagnosed of an incurable disease use your word to strengthen me i just lost a job use your word to strengthen me i don't know how the future looks like the word is a strengthener it not only gives information we find hope in it are we blessed yes the comfort of scripture number three the third way that we are strengthened in this kingdom is by a direct impartation and an infusion of strength from the lord directly God can stand up in his might and majesty and impart strength upon a man. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. Ezekiel chapter 2 please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up upon your feet and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that i heard him that spake unto me he said stand up 
and he said I have no strength and a spirit entered and speak upon my feet and he stood so God can directly impart and infuse strength second scripture very quickly let's hurry up I want us to pray Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 finally my brethren so he's talking to believers they who are of the fold finally my brethren be strong not in your bank account no be strong not in your uncle or auntie be strong not in your pastor or prophet or apostle or teacher be strong not in your father or mother be strong not in your certificate or your gift he said be strong in the lord and in the power of his might be strong in the lord Amplify puts it in a very powerful way. If you can give it to us, if that is possible, let's just look at Amplify. He said, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. Draw strength. To draw from you again, again. We've come to draw, 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 draw from you again, again. I've come to draw, I've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. impartation 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 Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 we already read that scripture it's very very important you can draw strength from him 2nd Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9 2nd Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9 please let's look at it very quickly Paul was crying to the Lord and asking him for help Paul was weary and here was the response of the Lord and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for you and here's the technology for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore I would rather glory in my infirmities Paul is saying that the power of Christ may rest upon me verse 10 therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, mysteriously, I am strong. Are we together? God can impart strength upon you. God can impart strength. He can, you can receive a surge of strength and may that happen to someone tonight yeah. that every door you have closed over your life and your destiny you will go back and say destiny let's continue from where we stopped four years ago from where we stopped five years ago let me give us the last and then we'll pray i want us to take some time to pray how are believers strengthened in this kingdom the fourth way is joy the joy of the Lord. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse strength. Neither be ye dismayed or sorry or in pity. He says for the joy of the Lord is not will be not was is present reality your strength neither be ye sorry for the joy of the lord don't pack up your life don't wrap up your ministry don't wrap up your business don't wrap up your endeavor for the joy of the lord is your strength philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 it says rejoice in the Lord always I used to think he said always 
but that's not what he said all way as you go rejoice all the way any road and any place you find yourself let your disposition be that of joy rejoice in the lord all way and again i repeat rejoice why because in this kingdom you see my brothers and my sisters joy is like a fetcher that is what you use to draw from the wells of salvation when you lose joy there are many things that will not come to your life in fact the bible puts it this way it says they that sow in tears it didn't say they will reap with joy he said they will reap in joy you will eat inside a kitchen so if you are not in that kitchen there's no meal you will reap in joy Psalm 67 we we'll start from verse 1 Psalm 67 God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us say amen, amen. verse 2 that thy way may be known in the earth thy saving health among the nations next verse let the people praise thee oh god let all the people praise thee yes please oh let the nations be glad and sing for joy for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth five let the people praise thee oh god let all the people praise thee uh-huh then shall the earth the increase that has always been there but has refused to come out that in praise and joy the earth shall yield her increase and god even our own god shall bless us listen to me you have defeated life in no small way when you master the art of remaining joyful you have defeated life in no small way when you master the art of being unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life joy all the way joy all the way you stand before the coffin with tears coming out of your eyes but you raise a song of praise and worship you go to your atm and check and your balance is 1500 naira and it looks like you've not done anything with your life you stand before your board and you see five carryovers and it looks like there's no hope of moving forward please hear me hear me hear me let life always find you in joy joy is a choice joy is a choice you can choose to walk in joy it's a choice The joy of the Lord is my strength. Choose to walk in joy. Let me tell you this. And this is something that gradually the continent of Africa and Nigeria is losing. Because we were one time purported to be the happiest people on earth. But right now, the spirit of depression is just coming round horizon you see young people looking as if they are old joyless people people who look dried like a fig tree what happened why should i rejoice look at the way my life is no sir to him that is joined to the living there is hope there is reason to be joyful are you hearing what i'm saying the bible talks about people talks about all kinds of circumstances happening and people dry up because there is no joy in the midst of them when you are joyful joy brings songs of worship when you are joyful it brings expressions of strength of hope and of peace joy is so powerful that it was used as one of the indices that verify and attest to the presence of the kingdom that when the kingdom of God is in a place meaning when his will is being done it will be characterized by the tripartite realities of righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost a state of merriment 
a state of excitement that is based on a revelation listen to me the revelation is i will joy in the god of my salvation there is a redeemer that is coming there is the lifter of men that is coming there is the anointer of men that is coming so although the fig tree may not blossom although there may not be olives on the vine although all of these things left and right may not seem to be manifesting the way you want you draw joy in the knowledge that there is a name that God is called the God of your salvation do you know what that means imagine a house burning and while you are looking at everything born you look at it and a time will come you will stop crying and you will start finding comfort the house was insured there is an insurance company that insured the house that means now that the house is bond it is time for your insurance to speak for you you have an agreement with them that for as long as you continue to pay your premium that when a disaster strikes they will take responsibility it is a mandate they have placed upon themselves so while you are watching your house bond you are regretting what is being bond there you suddenly draw strength there is an insurance are you getting what i'm saying now that's what it means to rejoice in the god of your salvation the god of your salvation the word savior is the hebrew word jehoshua that's where you get the word joshua from the god that saves the one who saves are you getting what i'm teaching you tonight it's very very important so you stand and then you draw strength the insurance company is coming and when you call on the insurance company they come to stand and look at the building and value it and within months your building is back and not only back better what you wanted to put in before that you could not put now you have your chance you wanted to put two parlors before but the rigor of removing things now everything is burnt and now you have the opportunity to partition the house well and put the living room god is speaking to someone joy please be careful guard your joy the same way a wealthy person protects a rolex in a safe guard your joy the same way a lecturer protects his certificate guard your joy the same way money is guarded in a bulk room in a bank protect your joy by all means protect your joy by all means it is your strength in this kingdom it is your staying power it is the guarantee that you will finish strong are we together yes so number one to be strengthened the revelation of the love of god number two the comfort of scripture you see look up please look up if you are a believer <coughs> if you are a believer and your word study life is not effective please obtain grace from god tonight to take your word study seriously because when life squeezes you it is it is written that will come out the word of god let it become your daily bread not one one verse per day no you should grow past that sit down with scripture study it it's like a deposit you are making the day you stand before goliath there is a scripture the day you stand before pharaoh there is a scripture the day you stand before saul there is a scripture the day satan himself comes to you there is a scripture the word of god and then number three the impartation direct impartation i believe that god will do this to our lives even as we pray a direct impartation of scripture and then number four joy koinonia access this mystery of joy like a river listen to me please listen to me 
life 24 hours already has by default programmed in it too many things to annoy you you will age yourself to death if you hand your life over to life to treat you you must define your possibilities the days that we live in now are days that joy must be a choice switch on your television and in five minutes you have had something that annoyed you you must choose to maintain your joy go to visit your child in school and you will see a teacher treating the child in a way you are waiting for your child to return with a work result and you will see something that does not bring you encouragement hear me any other thing you base for your joy will disappoint you it must be the joy of the lord as your strength as god comforted someone tonight the joy of the lord choose to be happy you receive a call from home are you aware of the the kind of i mean there's no money anywhere we are going to die and you say mommy calm down why should i calm down because god is still the monarch of the universe there is always a way out two of you cannot be under pressure you choose to be under pressure or god under pressure he says the keeper of israel the keeper of the covenant not a person that means listen when cgc is locked the key is with someone if that person does not come we're in trouble so when we want to access a place the keeper of the key is important so when the bible said the keeper of israel you would think he's talking about the nation no israel means covenant there is the keeper of the covenant of my destiny there is the keeper of the covenant of your destiny there is the keeper of the covenant of koinonia there is the keeper of the covenant of the prophecy upon your life see let me tell you this look at me satan is a roaring lion if you allow his roar scare you you will never be able to defeat the lion and cut the head and move. No, 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 no. Life will stand and claim bold face for you. You must sustain the intelligence in the spirit to say with joy will I draw. They see you bending for a long time and wonder what you are doing. And all of a sudden you draw out prosperity, speed, increase, lifting and while you draw it out people will just stand and say what is this the joy of the lord you're the god of awesome wonders i've tasted of your power Much more than I deserve. Help me. My eyes have seen. My ears have heard. The wonders of your creation. Creation bound in honor of you as we join. The words you speak, come on. The words you speak, the things around your treasure have lifted me. You took away the chains and cards that held me down. Listen to me it is in your lifetime you will build that house if it's in your lifetime a day will come you will not think about money again it is in your lifetime the anointing you seek one day you will no longer seek it because it's with you 
listen to me my brothers and my sisters it is in your lifetime that you will smile again there is a name God is called the God of Jeshurun he is called the one that rides upon the wings of the wind let God be true and let every man let every report medical report let every system be a liar let God be true and let every ministry report be a liar let God be true and let every academic report be a liar let God be true and let every financial report be a liar let God be true and every career report be a liar listen to me please hear me many years ago I remember one day I was sitting down somewhere in the campus and I saw a plane pass and I was looking at it and the Lord told me that the word will take you into that plane many times I believed him the Lord spoke to me that a time will come nations will come and will drink from that which he has put upon our lives I believed him listen you have gone too far with God to turn back remember Lord's wife remember Lord's wife husband and wife remember Lord's wife CEOs businessmen remember Lord's wife men and women of God remember Lord's wife that if you turn aside in the bell of battle your strength is small you must obtain grace to fight till you win you must obtain grace listen obtain grace to stand and face your fears fight and win oh they say you have cancer oh they say your genotype will never change that's nonsense obtain grace from God oh they say your children will never be responsible oh they say your life is finished see let God be true I'm teaching you how to win in life You must immerse yourself because the kinds the kinds of environment that Africa is brooding the kinds of environment that Nigeria is brooding is pungent I say that respectfully is pungent for greatness from television to internet to everywhere there's all kinds of nonsense that jump packs your ear sometimes you need to say hey when the music fades and I simply come we must be that generation you can shut away from the noise longing just to free something that's a word that will bless your heart there are times you need to off the TV, shut the laptop. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. Is that what you have required? It is within his power to make great and leap. You search much deeper within it. You look in into my heart. You are worshiping the one who sees into the heart of man. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about. It's all about you. It's all about. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made. But it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all. About you. It's all about please listen to what you are saying it's all about you it's all about you Jesus you are still going to sing this song and then we'll pray it's nine we'll pray for a few minutes listen listen when you make it about your sickness Benihin was and, and you know I, I follow him a lot and Benihin 
was teaching in one of his healing sessions and he said he found out that those who receive from God are people who learn to forget about themselves the moment you are conscious about yourself the mountains magnify they looked on to him there was a brazen serpent that was lifted and they looked on to him Barus Kaliata, and they were their faces were lightened illumination and God took shame and fear from their lives tonight we are going to sing that song again please take it high for me listen sometimes we need to remind ourselves and remind our generation that it is all about Jesus and I the ministry is about Jesus the business is about Jesus because sometimes you can be trying to make money and the devil looks at you and says you are a money monger you need to remind yourself and remind Satan that this is all about Jesus there are times listen to me that you will look at your children and sometimes you will put your ego on the line and he reminds you that it's not about your children it's about Jesus there is peace and rest when everything becomes about him nothing else matters nothing in this world will do listen for Jesus you're the center and everything revolves around you Jesus you Koinonia hear me when God chooses to lift you it's a choice he made when God chooses to honor you it's a choice he made God chose to speak to us that this year is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. And you may say, Apostle, we are just in November. You know how long it takes for God to do something? As long as his will allows. If his will says now, that's how long it will take. You are willing and able. Please listen to what I'm telling you. Because you see, Satan is a seeker of attention. Satan is a seeker of time. He seeks time using all kinds of distractions in your life. And if you do not sustain the ability to set your eyes like a flint, you will never be able to raise your children. You will never be able to pay the bills. You will never, listen, let me tell you, see, hear me. When God becomes the center of your focus, you keep looking at him and setting your gaze on him. And you will not know when you are rising. You will check and find out that you are not where you used to be again. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Please hold the hands of someone by your left and by your right. At the center of it all is you that I see, is you that I see. At the center of it all is you that I see, it's you, it's you that I see. There is power in your name. Ah. Miracles, miracles happen in your name. As we lift up our voice, as we lift our voice and pray. I woke up this morning to pray at about 3 a.m. Now listen, we are going to pray. And when I woke up, I was just walking around. I was not even praying. And the next thing the Lord told me, go on your knees. I just rested on the chair and I was in the spirit. And the strange thing was, I saw the level of speed 
things were unfolding in people's lives just like a new season listen listen i want to hear what i'm telling you i saw people buying vehicles getting houses moving i mean listen listen i i mean what i'm saying you know how how do i put it now um there's this thing in a when you you have a, a any digital device and you are fast forwarding you can adjust the fast forwarding listen to me i was in the spirit when i saw this i was watching like a drama and then every time seasons are opening one of the ways there are many ways god shows me one either in a military military attire or number two the page of a book opening and suddenly i saw the page of a book opening immediately i saw this i came back and that's why the lord told me to bring this message let me tell you my brothers and my sisters new seasons always don't look like it but for those who have strength lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Listen. We are going to pray. And the first prayer point tonight is you are going to judge God faithful. Take your eyes away from whatever has not happened or has happened and judge him faithful. Lift your voice and say, Lord, you are faithful. You are faithful. Both for the things you have done and the things that look like I'm not Faithful God. Faithful God. Faithful Saints of God pray, mighty ones pray, those who have been favored by the ancient one pray. Faithful God, ah. hallelujah. Eh, eh, eh. hallelujah, you're the faithful God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up. To be faithful means to possess the quality of consistency. To be faithful means to possess the quality of unbendableness. To be faithful means to possess the quality of integrity, predictability, sameness. And there is a name God is called faithful. 
and true. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I judge you faithful. You are consistent. I trust your faithfulness. Please help those under the anointing. I judge you faithful. I judge you faithful. Consistent. Unchanging. The same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. We pray. Intake in take your focus. You're not a man, oh. You're not a man, oh. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, oh. You're not. Number two, there is only one name. There is only one name with power to say. No system can say with power to say. I'm establishing the second prayer point. There is only one name. My salvation shift me to my destiny push me to prophecy lift your voice and pray let my life see your salvation is someone pray God of my salvation and I like a mighty man that you are Shut up. 
The Bible says salvation belongs to the Lord. It is within his power to make rich. It is within his power to bless. It is within his power to live. When God points at a man and says, this is my season to live, there is nothing that can be done under the surface of the earth. Listen to me. Salvation does not just mean salvation from sin and Satan. It is the word soteria. It is also the word sozo. Are we together now? Soteria means to be grafted out into honor. It's a translation, a shift of realms, a shift of dimension, a shift of reality, a shift of results. Soteria. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said we were like them that dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter and said they are among the hidden. The Lord has done great things for them. He says the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad. Then he says turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. It is within his power. Prayer point number three. Atmosphere. before me but many are the adversaries it is within your power to dislodge the spirits program to hunt destinies the stargazers over the destinies of men it is within your power lift your voice like a priest and pray tonight I command powers I command devils spirits ordinances territories Pray for your business. Pray for your life. Pray for your home. Pray for your children. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your career. I command forces. I command spirit. I command protection. I command manipulated spirit. In the name of Jesus. Command by the power that created the heaven.
Koinonia, look at me. Satan will not fold his arms and let you raise godly children. Satan will not fold his arms and watch your ministry expand. Satan will not fold his arms and watch the wealth of the kingdom come upon you, knowing that you have the mindset that promotes Christ. Satan will not fold his arms and allow peace in your marriage. Satan will not fold his arms and allow peace in your family. You are going to decree. You are going to create. I like you to rebuke the devil. Command his powers. Give way. Give way. Give way. Give way by the spirit. Command every force that is not of the Christ over your prophecy, over your life, over your destiny. By the blood of the eternal covenant, by the name of Hallelujah. Now listen, the last prayer point and we're done tonight. One of the ways that we know God is through the dimensions that he has revealed. He is healer. He is lifter. He is restorer. He broke himself into these dimensions so that the day you need that dimension of him, you can provoke it. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your hewa hey, your hewa hey is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. One more time. Just breathe your name, just breathe your name upon me. what you are saying let the reign of restoration comes because you are the restorer let the, hold on let the reign of revival come let the reign of grace come. when you pray listen the bible says in isaiah chapter 15 i think and verse 32 or so until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then any man's desert can be turned for a fruitful vine any desert can be turned for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine be turned to a forest but the secret is that shower so when you say lord don't just send help send your name because the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous can run and they are safe the name of the lord is security the name of the Lord is defense. The name of the Lord is speed. The name of the Lord is restoration. The name of the Lord is deliverance. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name. You are going to mention every dimension of the name of God that you need in this season to push you into prophecy. If it's restoration, call it. If it's healing, call it. If it's a miracle worker, call it. Lift your voice and pray. 
Let him restore your joy. Let him restore your prosperity. Let him restore your peace. Though your beginning be small, let your latter end. Call on the word. Hallelujah. The names of God. He can be healer. He can be restorer. He can be deliverer. Whatever it is that you need is covered in his name. His covenant name. YHWH Yahweh is his personal name. Hey. Hallelujah. Listen. Please hear me. There is a name of God that can take you from where you are now to where prophecy demands you should be. You must find that name. Find it in prayer. For some of you, it is the lifter. For some of you is the restorer. For some of you is the deliverer. For some of you is the mighty man in battle. For some of you is Ebenezer. For some of you is El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. For some of you, it is the ancient of days. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me add one more prayer. I apologize. Our time is gone. You're going to pray. Lord, let nothing in my life steal my joy. Listen to me. Hear me. Soon we're going to be wrapping up Koinonia now. And many of you will return home. Many of you are already, some of our people have left, gone for various reasons. Some are finishing their exams. They're going. And let me tell you something. The world that we live in today, unfortunately is saddled with all kinds of negative things from reports from family health reports reports of statistics reports of all kinds of findings and you are embedded in a system that is full of all of these things and most of them are complete nonsense as far as your destiny and god's program is concerned you will need to trust god for joy joy God joy jealously some of you have lost your joy you walk with gloominess as if life has pressed you down can I tell you something? Listen to me. The joy of the Lord is real strength. Once you sustain joy, you will watch your life continue to rise. The joy of the Lord is what guarantees harvest. The joy of the Lord is what guarantees finishing. I took this Bible and I found out that there was both Genesis and Revelation. And at the end of it, God is still seated on the throne on no account in this bible kings had to re, to relinquish their thrones in this bible queens had to relinquish their thrones in this bible nations had to relinquish their territory but from genesis to revelation there is an ancient one that remains seated as proof that he is the monarch of the universe are we together so my soul find rest in the fact that there is the name of God. Pray that last prayer and we'll wrap up this session. Lord joy, let there be joy overflowing right now. No room for sadness. 
No. No room for joy. Eat the joy of the Lord. The joy that he joy. A joy that comes up from the kete. Joy that is a kawasuli and the rose. Lord, my God. The joy. the joy Lord no matter what report I get from home your joy remains with me no matter what report I get in my office my joy remains with me no matter what results I see in my business in ministry joy Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May the revelation of this teaching that I shared with you provide tremendous strength for the journey ahead. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every lie of the devil over your destiny, every lie of Satan over your life, Every lie of Satan over your home, over your family, over your children, over your finances, over your spiritual life. I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ, that lie goes down and goes down forever. I pray for you, for those of you who have lost the strength and the fortitude to continue in ministry, in life tonight like the dew of Hammon, I pray let fresh strength be infused upon you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for any and everyone here who is being resisted by Satan by causes by yokes by activities of divination and the plots of evil I declare by the God of heaven I command and establish your liberty this night in the name of Jesus I speak to you by the Spirit of the Living God that everything God has spoken in your life he will cause you to be so aligned that it must come to pass Hebrews 2 If you're there, say amen. amen. Alright, let me start from verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep. Hallelujah. The Bible is saying give earnest heed to these things. Why? Because they are capable of sleeping. Verse 2. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Verse 4. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Verse 5. This is where I want you to concentrate now. For unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come of which we speak. Listen to me. The Bible says God did not give any angel authority over his works. And I hope you realize that Satan, listen to me, please follow me tonight. I hope you realize that Satan was one of the fallen angels. So the Bible says no angel, whether fallen or still faithful, was ever at any time by God given authority. This is the first revelation to the fact that Satan is an illegal occupant in the earth, number one. Number two, Satan possesses no legitimate authority over the believer. The Bible says to none of the angels did God ever say, I have put all this in subjection. Remember Genesis 1, 26. And Elohim said, let us make man in our own image. And let them have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, everything that creepeth. And so he said, for unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come. Hallelujah. Let's read on. 
But one in a certain place, this is speaking of Psalm 8, David now. One in a certain place testified saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? This was the revelation that was given to the psalmist. Or the son of man that thou visitest him. This is talking about, listen, it says verse, verse 7. Can we read together? Just look at the projector. One to read. Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Stop. The word angel there was an error in the translation. It's not the word angels. It's the word God. The word Elohim. Thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim. All right. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. And this set him over what? The works of your hands. This is talking about man. The next verse please. Thou hast put how many things? How many things? Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. He said, for in that he put all in subjection under his feet, he left how many things? He left how many things? You must get this revelation tonight. He left nothing that is not put under him. Hold on. Now this is, Paul is giving us a revelation here. He's saying that the Lord, when he created man, are you following me now? That to none of the angels did he give authority. So according to God's organogram, after the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the next in the spiritual hierarchy is who? Man. And then the angels. Are you listening to me now? And then after angels, we have spirit beings. Because everything in the realm of the spirit is more superior to anything in this realm. And then it ends with the world of unbelievers. And the Bible says to none, but to man, this man, Adam, Adam is not the name of Adam. Adam means man that was created. To this class of man that he created, he put how many things? All things. Let me tell you what all things mean. From the second heavens, there are three heavens. The Bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. Hallelujah. The first heaven talks of your atmosphere. The second heaven talks of the realm of the spirit. Are you following me now? The Bible talks of spiritual wickedness that operate in heavenly places. The second heavens. And then the third heaven and the Bible calls it the heaven of heavens is where the throne of God is. The heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool. So the Bible tells us that from the second heavens right unto hell. Are you listening to me? Authority was given unto man. So Joshua can stand and look at the sun and say thou son stand still. Are you listening to me? Moses can look at the waters and tell it to divide. He says, can, can we have that again please? I want you to have a revelation. He said, for thou hast put all things. Inanimate and, and animate things. All things under his feet. And so the height, the apex of God's creation is man. Are you listening to me? Are you following me now? all things this is the reason why man has the ability to tame an elephant this is the ability why man can build bridges inside water are you following me now this is why man can build the ability to conquer matter the ability to conquer nature he says he put all things in subjection to man hallelujah that's the reason why the tsunamis and all the natural disasters are an aberration because they are voices that are speaking that what the Lord has said over man is not valid. Are you listening to me? He has put all things in subjection under his feet. It says for in that he put all things under his feet, he left nothing. He left nothing. That means as a Christian, you are absolutely in control of your circumstances and environments. Are you listening to me? Now, when you did not know Christ, everything was allowed to happen. We came from different families. Are you following me now? With all kinds of things. But when you come into this new life, this is what Paul is trying to explain to us. That as far as God is concerned, he has brought you to an experiential position where all things ought to be under your feet. All things. All things. Prosperity, health, blessings, advancement. All things. But there is a mystery. 
Let's continue. Can we finish up that verse from both? One to read. Come on, let's read together. One to read. Okay, hold on. Hold on. What is Paul saying? Why is Paul trying to confuse us here? Paul is telling us that all things have already. Are you listening to me? The word H-A-S-T is past tense. Am I correct, English students? Meaning it has already happened as far as God is concerned. But Paul is saying from our perspective, he never said, but God does not see. He said, but we. But we. Now we do not see all things yet under him. So what is the problem? Paul is showing us that there is a problem here. God put creation under man. Yet when you look around, you do not see man walking in this dominion. He said, we do not yet see all things. Next verse. Hallelujah. But we see Jesus. But we see Jesus. Who was made a little lower than angels. Now, a prototype. The Bible says man was made a little lower than who? Elohim. Now, he now says we also see Jesus. Just like man. A portrait, a foreshadow of what he's designing for man. A little lower than angels. Not because the word angels there is the word Elohim. Are you following me now? Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Remember, the Bible says, Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who although being in equality with God, did not consider it a thing to be grasped, but he what? Lowered himself. This is what Paul is explaining here. Alright? So you can note there and write Ephesians, I mean, uh, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 to 11. It says, For the suffering of death, he said, Now he is crowned with what? Glory and honor. That he by the grace of God should taste death. The word death there is not just cessation from living. Are you following me now? The word death there is the same word that is used darkness. It's the same word that is used chaos. Are you following me now? It's saying for the sufferings of death. So you can replace it. That he by the grace of God should taste sickness. Should taste poverty. Should taste delay. Are you following me now? Once for every man. So that on account, when did he do this? His substitutionary sacrifice. Are you following me now? Where he became a substitution for man. So everything he went through for man in redemption, we were in him by covenant, fulfilling the legal claims of justice. Do you understand? And so it says, For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many what? Sons into what? Glory. Hold on. The Bible says the purpose of his death and all that he has done was to translate many sons. Before Jesus Christ died, he was the only son, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. But when he died and rose again, he stopped becoming the only son. He became the firstborn among many brethren because he sowed himself to the earth as a seed. And the Bible says, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It's a spiritual principle of multiplicity. Now when he rose, he called you Sam and said, I died to bring you to call many sons into glory. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? So you can connect this now with 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. It says, according as his divine power had given us how many things? You now see it? All things that pertain unto what? Am I connecting something for you? It says, according as his divine power had given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. There is a but there now. It says, through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue verse 4 says wherefore has he given us these exceedingly great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust so the purpose of jesus's death it's not just to come and take us to heaven alone. No. If that was it, you would have just flown to heaven the moment you died. Are you listening to me? There is a glory that he had. Man had this glory and it was lost. So Jesus went and paid the price. Listen to me. Because the eternal counsel of God, listening to me, Listen to me. As far as our church age is concerned, the eternal counsel of God is that all things, Colossians 1, Ephesians 1, 
the eternal counsel of God is that all things be headed up in the Christ. That he truly becomes the head of the church, the body. Are you listening to me? And so the way this will happen is that Christ, Jesus, will submit to the authority of the Father. Are you listening to me? And by the agency of the Spirit, the church, the body of Christ, will come under subjection to Christ. And by authority, we will enforce his dominion until cosmos comes under authority of man. At that point, Christ becomes King of kings and Lord of lords. Then an end will come to our age. We will begin another age. Are you following me now? And so, his goal was to bring many sons into glory. What is glory? It's from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. It means the, the presence, the true nature, the character, the fullness of all that a man is and all that he represents. So when the Bible says that he is bringing many sons into glory many sons into his character of of love his character of grace his character of power his character of prosperity his character of divine health his character of wisdom his character of leadership hallelujah so when you give your life to christ it's not just for you to be born again and say, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> you need to realize that there was an intention in the heart of the Father. When he came to save you, the day Femi came to give his life to Christ and you stood here, listen to me. While the Holy Ghost was convicting you, there was an intention. Your coming out to get born again was only a means to an end, not the end in itself. Are you listening to me? That's why when you get born again, it's only... The beginning of your journey not the end and so you begin an experiential walk through the ministry of the word and the spirit he begins to train you listen can i tell you something the ultimate purpose of god is to bring you into that realm of glory so he starts teaching you how he behaves he tells you now in the kingdom speak like me you see the basics talk like me he's teaching you talk like me speak like me walk like me soon you find out lord i'm becoming like you he says that's the goal i just started giving you beats talk like me speak like me suddenly you talk and you see that things begin to change learn to love like me learn to give like me the moment you begin to obey these little instructions the ultimate goal is not just to make you a talkative is to make you become a replica of his glory are you listening to me bringing many sons into glory now but watch this this is god's original intention and if satan is an enemy of of the lord and the enemy of the church what do you think his agenda is then to be able to stop are you listening to me to try to stop the reality of the believer coming into this position where you know and understand are you listening to me that God's desire for you is to rise to that position of glory. He said, know ye not that ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. Psalms 82 from verse 5, he said, they know not, neither do they understand. They grope in darkness and so the earth is out of course. He said, have I not said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the most high. He said, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Say, I'm not ordinary. Say it, I'm not ordinary. You see, the problem is, many of you just say it because you are doing it in church. Are you listening to me? This is not about bragging. This is not about pride. This is the position that God has brought you by grace. And so you have authority over sickness. You have authority over everything. Are you listening to me? You have authority over the atmosphere. You have authority when you go to your families. You are not an ordinary person. So you cannot, it doesn't matter what your village is and where you come from. You realize that you have been separated. And now the Bible says when we were without Christ, separated from the commonwealth of Israel. But by grace he has called us out of every tribe. When you get born again, it's not the issue of where you are coming from. It's your new life in Christ. 
hallelujah in bringing many sons into glory but we do not yet see all things why because there is a devil out there who will never watch you step into that reality are you following me now and this is the foundation of our teaching Ephesians Lord grant us insight tonight the goal of this meeting is not just to make you spiritually educated is to make you powerful if the church does not walk in dominion there is trouble in our generation mm. verse 12 Ephesians 6 verse 12 are you there say amen all right for we wrestle not against the word wrestle there is the word contend for we contend not against flesh and blood look up please in other words please follow me we are going to be i will be touching and be balancing many things about the concept of warfare deliverance satan are you listening to me very quickly watch this because i, I will need to balance a lot of teachings that many of us have received that have misguided us and have stopped us from coming into the place of kingdom authority now in the bible we have established the fact that god's desire is that many sons be, be born into what glory is that correct do you believe that to raise you to a position where you live and reign and legislate on behalf of heaven and the earth and now the bible tells us we contend not that means there are adversaries are you listening to me there are all kinds of resistances coming from Satan. Watch this. I hope you realize that there is a law in this earth realm that whatever does not have a body cannot function in this realm. Is that correct? This is why the Bible says the church is called what? The body of Christ. The church is the body that the Godhead uses. So if God wants to heal, he finds a body. That can cooperate with him and be his hands here on the earth are you listening to me now satan does not have a physical body demons do not have physical bodies are you listening to me so it makes it impossible for them to freely flow in our midst so they search for human agents the bible says we wrestle not against what that means the issue is not your grandmother in your village are you listening to me all these kind of deliverance things that people come now god is there is a deliverance going on now this is the real deliverance happening now are you listening to me he sent forth his word and his word he led them and delivered them because there are many of us right now who have been misguided you are sleeping in the night suddenly you see your mother or your father appear to you and then you go to one false prophet like the guy who prophesied to that lady that she was going to die that's a false prophet let me tell you something a true prophet does not just reveal catastrophe he stops it if he's truly a prophet there is authority to stop it all these prophets that only reveal problem there's something stop it if you are not you are not an ambassador go and sit down are you listening to me so now you come and meet me sam comes to meet me and says things are not working and then the man is praying watch this this is a lot of them have not come into a place of maturity while you are praying then i see sam's grandmother doing incantations the next thing i say ah sam your grandmother and then i say to your grandmother and you and i say sam what am i seeing i'm even seeing your sister it may not be a lie even if they are witches and wizards the bible says what we wrestle not against what that means it is vain it's vain just to look at this person and say grandmother just die don't you know that spirits don't die they will move from one place and look for another entity your problem has not been solved are you following me now there's all kinds of bitterness and anger in the body of Christ because everybody is blaming everybody. Hallelujah. Everybody is calling everybody a witch and a wizard and whatever. No, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. There are three levels of Satan's manifestations in the life of people. One is called possession, acute possession. That one is in control of your spirit. You are aware that's the realm of witches and wizards and all of this 
The second one is called influence, manipulation, and control. That one, he's, you are not possessed. But because of your mind, the Bible says, the weapons of our warfare are what? Are not carnal, but mighty through God. Are you listening to me? To the pulling down of what? Strongholds. They are in the realm of the mind. It's a casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. It's a bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. So demons can manipulate people. Demons can manipulate preachers. Demons can manipulate tongue-talking believers. Are you listening to me? When you are born again, it's true that you cannot be possessed, but you can be manipulated greatly. Error is a type of demonic manipulation. Hallelujah. So every time the concept of what we call spiritual warfare, right, please, right, I need to define spiritual warfare right now. Spiritual warfare is not in terms of the word war there. Please listen. The word war there. Look up, please. Look up. Because this is our idea of war. Are you listening to me? So you are a warrior. We even act it in many ministries. They say, now assume your position and then you assume. And now you imagine in your mind, Satan, are you ready? And then you move back. Give him one punch. Then he gives you another one. Then finally, after so much travail, they beat you like you enter the meat machine. Then you come out like more than a conqueror. No, no. That is error. Are you listening to me? That's why we began to teach. Listen, every time you approach the realm of darkness, you approach from the position of Christ's finished work. The Bible says all things have already been conquered. You are not trying to conquer Satan. You are trying to enforce the victory. Are you listening to me? That's what we call the fight of faith. It's not the fight of sight or the fight of senses. Let me tell you what the Bible defines as real spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is the operation of the word and the spirit together to establish the victory that Christ has brought. Say amen. If you are finding it hard to say amen this is a sign that this meeting is for you this night because many of us don't like it say i had this thing they give you an idea that you're a military man yes you are but listen the bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal they are not man-made they are mighty through god hallelujah let's read on thank you jesus Are you getting blessed tonight? Alright, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities. Against, against rulers of the darkness of this world. Then against spiritual wickedness. These ones do not reign in this earth realm. They operate from the realms of the second heavens. Remember in the book of Daniel, the Bible says when Daniel set himself to pray. Are you following me now? When Gabriel was bringing in the prayer because he's the archangel in charge of service. The Bible says that spiritual wickedness across the territory of Persia, the prince of Persia intercepted. And because it's not in Gabriel's office to fight, it's the angels that fight. Hallelujah. The Bible says the angels confirm, they perform the words of God's messengers. And so when, when, when you stand as a believer, the first understanding is that you are approaching Satan not in your strength as a representative. Many of us, listen, every time I stand to minister to the sick, every time I minister to devils, I don't stand as myself. I say, oh, man of God, you have an apostolic. Demons don't even know who is called an apostle. They only know Jesus. Are you listening to me? They can call you an apostle or a prophet or whatever. Demons don't know those things. All they know is Jesus and any ambassador that truly carries the badge of, his, of Jesus Christ. So rea you realize that you are high. You are seated up there. Every time you stand 
and look at Satan. Don't be surprised. Now this is where I will balance it. Because many preachers have taught that every time challenges come or if you are truly manifesting faith, listen to me, if you are truly manifesting faith, then when challenges come and the rest is, it's a sign that you are backsliding. That is another kind of error. Are you listening to me? Say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. So what is the warfare of a believer? How do you stand against the wiles of the enemy? Because that's what Ephesians is teaching us in verse 6. Verse 13. On account of the fact that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He said, wherefore, take unto you the whole what? The whole what? Now let me. You will tell me whether knife and bow and arrow and so on and so forth was mentioned. There are people with all kinds of revelations that we teach in church and we build up a crippled body that you may be able to what did he say fight you may be able to what what does it mean to withstand to resist to refuse the victory over something he says stand everybody says stand stand yes Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with what? It's showing you the weapons that you use to fight the good fight of faith. Number one is what? Truth. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall do what? Set you free. So every time there is bondage, what do you need? What do you need, please? Truth. Revelation. So every time there is bondage and you are praying in the spirit and say, Lord, I sense bondage. In our family, there is bondage. What is the revelation you need? It's not the issue of killing your grandmother. You need light. You need light. The entrance of thy word give it light and understanding unto the simple. It says, and having the breastplate of what? The breastplate of what? I had a man of God say it so beautiful. And I'm going to say it. He said, why did he say breastplate? Because that's the one that covers your heart. Remember, righteousness is the ability to stand before the Father's presence without a sense of inferiority and guilt. Every time righteousness shifts, you are vulnerable. Because Satan begins to use your past. Satan begins to use all kinds of things. Are you following me now? So Satan comes and tells you about the things you did yesterday. And then you use truth. First, you stand and declare, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. It's not because of what I have done. It's what Christ has done. I am walking in the victory that Christ has given me. Mm. That's what the Bible calls the fight of faith. That's how believers are to stand. So Ephesians teaches us who we are in Christ. To know your identity. Then it tells you how to live and manifest the Christ-like character. No bribery. No corruption. No sleeping around. No malpractice. Say amen. Don't look at me. Then it teaches you how to stand. Shows you who you are in heaven. Teaches you how to operate in the earth. And then teaches you how to conquer the powers of hell. It says stand therefore. Having your loins girded about with truth. And having the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet short with the gospel of what? The gospel of what? There is a gospel called the gospel of peace. One of the manifestations of the spirit of Satan is trouble. There are many of you that trouble is a byproduct of violating many laws of God. The, gospel, the word peace there is not just calmness. Are you listening to me? The gospel of shalom. The word shalom there is the word prosperity. Hallelujah. There is trouble if you are poor. True or false? There is trouble if you are sick. True or false? He said there is a gospel. There is a gospel. It says, let your feet, what do you do with your feet? You walk. That means let this perpetually be your mindset. Walk with this. With the gospel that God wants to prosper you. With the gospel that God wants you to live in health. Are you following me now? With the gospel of shalom. Not just peace and quietness. Above all, taking the what? Shield of faith. The shield of faith wherewith you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked 
taking the shield of faith. Now watch this. The shield, what do you do with a shield? You stop attacks. Are you listening to me? Faith comes by what? But the manifestation of faith does not come by hearing. It comes by speaking. Faith enters you when you hear. But is released from you when you speak. Are you listening to me? And so, you, you hear the word. Not newspapers, not chase magazines. Faith comes when you hear the word. So as I'm listening to tapes, as I'm building myself, as I'm studying Christian books, I'm hearing the voice of the Spirit through those pages and my faith is built and what happens? I hold the shield of faith. So when Satan looks at you, when you go to your CGPA and you see all kinds of carryover, Satan says, that is it. No, you lift the shield of faith quickly. I am what the Bible says I am. I am full of the word. They send you a report from home. They say, guess what? Something is happening. The landlord is coming to kick people. Take on the shield of faith. This is what the Bible calls the warfare of the believer. Not to say the last money that came, where it? Mm, take the shield of faith. I refuse to be offended. Your friend is calling you something. You take the shield of faith. And the helmet of what? The helmet of what? Of salvation. Where are we? The helmet of salvation. Look up, please. Why did he call it a helmet? Why did he say the hand gloves of salvation? Why did he call it the helmet of salvation? Because you cover your head. Salvation is the foundation on which everything starts. This one is salvation as being born again. Are you listening to me? That's what the Bible calls assurance of salvation. There are many of us who are saved, but you are not sure if you are saved. This is why we took our time to teach you a lot of things. Many of you are truly saved. But when you go to certain evangelistic meetings, by the time they finish, you, you now say, to, am I saved or not? You say, just go out if you are not sure. Please don't, don't disturb me. There are many of you, every altar call, every single altar call to be born again, you are coming out. Now, I'm not, I'm, there's nothing wrong. If it's an altar call to pray in partition and all of this, but if it's an altar call to give your life to Christ, can I surprise you? There is only one sin an unbeliever has. That's the sin of not confessing Jesus as Lord. Hmm. An unbeliever has only one sin. It doesn't matter what he has done. He is lost anyway. The only sin that takes an unbeliever to hell is not confessing Jesus as Lord. All right, let's, let's talk of something else. Are you listening to me? The helmet of salvation. And what? The sword. Come on. The sword of the spirit. Which is what? Which is what? The word of God, the sword of the spirit. So every time Satan brings his fiery dart, what do you use? Let's look at the life of Jesus, our high priest and our pattern man. The Bible makes us to understand that Satan comes to meet him after fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Watch this. Every time Satan comes to a man, Satan comes to meet Sam and says, Sam, did God really say you are the HOD of worship team? Watch this. Satan will always try to let you do sensual things to validate what God has already said. I mean, he just came out of the waters and there was a voice. This is my beloved son. Am I right? Now Satan is telling him, if you are really the son of God. That's why Satan will tell you, if you are really beautiful, sleep with that guy. If you are really intelligent, you better do whatever you can do to get five points. Many of us are putting ourselves under needless pressure, trying to prove what the word of God already says we are. Are you listening to me? So he's told him, if you are truly the son of God, turn what? Stones into bread. Jesus would have said, all right, I will not only stone, turn stones into bread, you will see butter on it to let you know I'm the most high, not just the son of God. That's what many of us would have done. Said, That's an easy thing. Come on. Blue band, I call you from the leaves in the tree. But he said it's not necessary. It is. It is. It is. That's, see, this is how to fight Satan. No, he cannot stand it. It's written. Watch this. 
do you know Satan even used it is written against Jesus? In the realm of the spirit is an interchange of words. The higher words prevail. So, demons sit down. Witches and whatever. What do they use? They don't bring cane and flog you. They use it is written. In their ordinance, the Bible says, blotting out every ordinance is something that was written. Even the judgment upon the kings, Psalms 149, is called the written judgment. The world is a legal place, friends. Are you listening to me? So he said it is written. And then Satan takes him, watch this, and he tells him, he showed him the kingdoms of all this world and said, if you bow to me, I will give you. Because until Jesus died, Satan was the legal holder of the keys. Where did he get it from? Adam. That's why Jesus didn't say, are you joking? It's my kingdom. He knew he could do it. And he said what? He refused. Satan takes him to a tower and says, can you just fall down? For it is written, he shall put his angels charge. Come on, Satan. Satan is studying the Bible. You are not studying it. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? So he comes and begins to attack you. He tries to find everywhere the Bible. Look at all the places you are to protect. The breastplate of righteousness. Helmet of salvation. The gospel of peace. Hallelujah. You are holding in your hands the sword of the spirit. And then on your arm there is a shield of faith. There's nothing to cover your back because you are not supposed to give up. You are not supposed to retreat. The prophecy has been made that you are a winner. So there was nothing designed to cover your back. The Bible says he who turn, if you turn in the day of battle, your strength is small. Hallelujah. Now, practicals. Satan begins to throw all kinds of fiery darts. Watch this, the operation of Satan. He begins to use the word of God. Sam, you will not be born again. You will not be this. Your salvation is not true. Suddenly you begin to feel pains around your body. And truly, truly, physically speaking, there are pains. Suddenly you go to your bank account. There is nothing there. You go to the board. What happened? The results are not doing well. Everything, you lay your hands to do everything and it's not working and then satan tells you now using the evidences you see around you can you truly say god is faithful and then the, the man who has now become sense driven says lord okay but let's look at this thing critically now that's where the bible says abraham considered not the moment satan reduced you from a spiritual person to a scientist you are in trouble because he begins to give you facts. He said, let's examine this critically. You just prayed the miracle service. You just had that the only money that your father had has disappeared. Watch this. Now, you know who you are in Christ. Meaning, his victory is your victory. You already know the end by prophecy. He told his son Timothy, he said, war a good warfare with the prophecy. God gives you prophecy so that you can know what the end will be. Then by the manifestation of the principles of the kingdom, you begin to walk into that reality. Hallelujah. So I get up in the morning and I say, Satan, it doesn't matter what you are bringing. I believe what the Bible says. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm hearing reports while I look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Because the things that are unseen are permanent. The things that are seen are temporal. Hallelujah. Satan uses human agents. When they look at you and say you will not become anything in life, you say, though my beginning is small, my latter end shall fire. Yes, my village may not be in the map of Nigeria, but I know that the blood of Jesus was shed for me. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. I am precious. Sickness is hitting you down. If that same spirit, come on now, that raised Christ, you are sending words in the spirit. You are saying, I'm a good soldier. I'm not weak. The moment you speak, God tells the angels, are you not hearing? Have I not written that I am alert and active, watching over my word? Every time you speak, you put pressure on God to protect his integrity. So I refuse to be silent. I refuse to be silent. I refuse to be silent. 
and you begin to speak words of faith in the name of the Lord Jesus that terminal disease over my father will not take him in the name of the Lord Jesus I believe I believe I believe he that must come unto God must believe it looks like you are stupid but when the result comes let me tell you something friends God is not joking with you many of you are already afraid now where will my school fees come from and Satan is telling you all right the proposal your uncle made for you are you ready to consider you say in the name of Jesus the Lord is my shepherd come on the sword of the spirit the Lord is my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd. An unbeliever comes to ask you out. Use the weapon of God's word. What fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light got to do with darkness? There is a decision and you need to say no. The Bible says the grace of God has appeared unto all men. Teaching us to say no. There is grace. Let me tell you something. It may take a while. And this is where the Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience. One of the most frustrating things is that you are speaking God's word and pressing and results are not coming. But you know what? There are many of us that you get to that edge. Suddenly you give up. There's a song that says, I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. Are you listening to me? Many of us, when you are at the end of the road, where your blessing, the Bible says, if the cloud be full of rain, the man you call Father Abraham for 25 years, God spoke. When some people were celebrating the silver jubilee of their children, he was still waiting. He said, God told me. The man we call Noah, God told him rain will come. Let me tell you how long they built the ark. 100 years. How long have you waited on God? That you are yelling at him and you 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 will not many of us are talking but what we are speaking we are sowing demonic terrible seeds are you listening to me so every time i pray i take the word of god i say lord i know you are faithful in the name of jesus i know you are faithful you may be crying there's nothing wrong still cry but say lord my tears will not stop me from speaking you're sleeping and you're tired and you're weary. You want to pray. You say there's no result. I've been praying. There's no marriage. Can you stand? Ah, Isaiah 34. Seek out of the book of the Lord and read. None of these words shall fail. None shall want her maid. Lord, I thank you. You designed me for a man somewhere. And I thank you. You are called the father of spirits. Rather than warning God and saying, Lord, I'm giving you the last chance, I will backslide. You will go to hell. Are you listening to me? Say, I will stand. Say, I will stand. See, final year students, listen to what I'm saying very well. This message is important. Because many people graduate with all kinds of excitement and then you meet a rude shock in life. Suddenly you find out that it's not the way Nigerian film has told you. They just wrote three years later. They showed the guy with one big house and everything. And in your mind, because you fed yourself with all kinds of things. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience. I'm not saying God cannot bless people. But I'm saying believers must be taught that patience is an aspect of faith. Because when God wants to give you 20 million next week, Satan will say, take 2 million now. And that's how many people out of all this get rich rubbish. Many people have gotten themselves, they've pierced themselves with sorrow. The things of God may be gradual, but it's sure. We have a sure word. Are you following me now? Whatever God cannot give me, I cannot get it. Whatever God cannot give me, I don't even want it. Because it is only the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow. Every other blessing comes with a measure of sorrow. Anything that will take me to hell, I don't want it. Are you listening to me? So you must learn to stand. Every time you are praying, it's not the issue of people to say, Lord, I know that if you kill, if you kill my, my, my sister, the moment you kill my sister, I know the door will open. 
Lord, I squeeze our spirit, I put it in a bottle, I close it. All this kind of demonic prayer. Many of us even do prophetic things. Yes! You go to the houses of prophets. They say, bring the pictures of all the people. They put it in a bottle, close it, and shake different things. Smoke is coming out, and then you feel it's working. Because we walk, see the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Satan walks by sight and not by faith. Hallelujah. So as a believer, you will pray. Every time when we talk to people about praying, praying, it's not just the issue of comfort. Are you listening to me? Every time you pray, you afford yourself the opportunity to send words into your future. You are prophesying. What you see in my life is not what I'm praying about today. It's the result of what I prayed about yesterday. Tomorrow you will see what I'm speaking today. Are you listening to me? There are many of you, you are speaking with your one sandals. The blessing of the Lord is upon my life. I will be a blessing to generations. And while you are saying it, you are drinking Gary with no sugar. Don't worry. Be happy because you will not have the opportunity to see that again. I saw one picture that we snapped when we were at the cafeteria. You remember? We sat down like prisoners, all of us. I was with my jacket. And Jimmy was here. Jax, all of us, we just sat down. We were laughing. But while we were laughing, we were speaking. Come on. This is the difference between you and the person in the class. You are listening to the same lecture, but you are not going to the same place. There is an ability. You are in your office. Everybody is receiving monthly salary, but there's an extra grace. You are tithing. You are giving. You are stopping the devourer. I'll never be a failure in life. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'll never be. I've found the keys. I've found the keys. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I believe the word of God. I'm not just preaching it. I believe. That's why when people are making a boast of what they have become, I can't join them because I know how I got there. Hallelujah. So you are not ordinary. You see, the goal of this thing, many of us feel very excited now. But every time, have you been speaking about the things that are troubling you? Don't allow Satan to just ride through your life. Don't use wrong words. No! Every time you use wrong words, you may feel psychologically comforted, but you have tortured yourself again. Thank God for not killing your enemies because you will be the first person to drop down and die. So I have the spirit of faith. I lift up the sword of the spirit. Hallelujah. You're on your job and somebody is frustrating you. None of your business with the person. Just pray and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Don't say, don't tell God what Satan is doing. Tell him what his word says he will do. Many of us go to pray and you spend hours telling God what Satan is doing. That's not what he said you should do. He said, as I hear you speak, it's not just speaking your words. Ezekiel 37 verse 7. I prophesied as I was commanded. And then there was a sound. He says, oh bones, hear ye the word of who? The Lord. There's no other word that is valid in the realm of the spirit. Not even your own words. It is the words of God. Are you listening to me? I choose to believe God's word. See, this is a training. This is a training. You're on your job, you enter your office and you lay your hands in the name of Jesus. This is the day that who made? Who made? I do not read in my Bible that Satan helped God to make any day. This is the day that the Lord who happens to be my father has made. He didn't say has created. He said has made. Meaning it was designed. It was crafted. When God was making my day, he said, uh... How will Josh's life be tomorrow? It will be best for him to walk sick, free, blessed, prosperous. And then he created it. But Satan will step into that day and say, no, it will not be like that. And then he say, okay, to Lord, you see what? No, 
you stand and say, I, I have found it. My Bible is a mirror. My Bible is a door. My Bible is a picture. It lets me know what God has said. And I take that word, I put it in my spirit. And I'm not going to let any devil stop me. I will speak the word of God. As you take your time praying in the spirit, as you pray in the spirit, you are building capacity. You know why? So that your strength will not be small. That's why we pray in tongues. There are many of us, our strength is small. Every little challenge will just fall back. Though he slay me, Job said, yet will I praise him. Are you listening to me? Final year students, many of you are already afraid. Calling all kinds of uncles and aunties. And saying, what of uh, uh, uncle sir? The other issue we spoke about when I was in 200 level. Oh, if God be for me. If God be for me. If my God be for me. If God be for me. If God be for me, I need not pledge allegiance to any man under the sun. If God be for me, if God, he said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes. Lift up your eyes for your school fees. Lift up your eyes for your job. The Bible says you will occupy houses you did not build. That's what my, you may not believe it, but I believe it. And I will walk in it. I walk in the favor of the Lord. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou Prepares a table before me, not in the absence, in the presence of my enemies. So as a final year student, you walk out and say, Hallelujah. A graduate is out with the anointing of the Holy Ghost, not just a certificate from ABU. I have an anointing. The Esther anointing is upon me. The favor anointing is upon me. Every door that is closed must open. I begin to speak. So you finish your exams, and while other people are popping beer. And behaving foolishly look at their lives after 10 years you will regret it you will know the consequences of not speaking you take one or two weeks back what are you doing you are just speaking and say no I need to build something the only thing that is permitted to enter your future they are words hallelujah if I were you I would take five days I will dedicate every day to speak on several aspects of my life. Today is finances. I will sit down and search through scriptures. Let me tell you something, friends. This thing works. Are you listening to me? It works. And I believe the word of the Lord. And you begin to speak. You begin to prophesy. You begin to declare. And you say, Lord, I have no man. Maybe your father is late. Maybe your mother is late. And everybody's running away from you. Cheer up. Cheer up. You are an ambassador. Say it. Say it again. If there is anything I want you to take out of Koinonia final year students. Some of you, we may not see you again. Maybe forever. But I want you to know that while you were staying in Zaria. That a central message in your spirit that you are an ambassador. I tell you, many of you, after many years, you will sleep and you will hear these messages. You will remember that there was somebody shouting at the top of his voice. Whenever life presses you down, suddenly you will hear it in your spirit. The Bible says you shall hear a voice. It didn't say the voice of the Holy Ghost. You shall hear a voice. The voice of the Spirit. The voice of ambassadors. The voice of faithful men. You will hear these messages again. You are an ambassador. Arise, sons of glory. Arise, generals. Arise sons of glory when they say they are bribing in the office you say no no nevertheless the foundation of the lord standeth sure have been this seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that named the name of christ depart you say no i'm not a corrupt nigerian you become a minister no way no way no corruption i hope you are not just jumping because some of the people who are doing what is spoiling this nation, they were in church. They had this message that I'm, I'm teaching to you. But they did not mix it with faith. I tell you, there is a generation rising. Are you hearing me? There is a generation rising. We are not the wasted generation. I see it. I see the breaking of a brand new day. I see the breaking of a brand new day. New day. Steve, can you help me? I see the 
I see the breaking of a brand new day. Listen, I will not organize dinner for you final year. It is, we are going to launch you here with an anointing. Are you listening to me? We will launch you with an anointing. That's why we told you tonight is your night. Listen, tonight is the night. I want you to open up your spirit. That's what we did for the final year students. That's what we always do. It's wonderful to organize dinner and dress and do this wonderful. But you have eaten enough. It's time to receive something. Hear me? Let me tell you, words have prophetic implication. It will follow you after decades in your life. Hallelujah. Isaac looked at his son Esau and blessed him. Did he give him money? What did he give him? And the Bible tells us that a few years later, Esau came with cattle. He came with servants. Where did he get them from? That's what will follow you. So that after five years, we see you coming with companies and ministries and corporations and children. The recession notwithstanding, none of your business with the recession. You are an ambassador. You belong to a class of royalty. I'm telling you this. When you graduate, people will laugh at you. They will tell you what I'm saying does not make sense. But the generation that will survive, the times that are coming, will be men of the world. If the world cannot do it, then we are hopeless. But thank God for the power of the word. It created the heavens and the earth. The Bible says through faith, we understand that the world, that my future, that my life, that my finances is framed by the word. Final year students, all of you, I want you to jump up gloriously. All final year students. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want to invite all final year students I hope we can have this. Okay, not this side because of the elders. Please just dress here a little bit. All of you jump out here and come and line up quickly. Please do it quickly. Yahweh. Yahweh. who is not praying he's not hearing any word he's jumping and busting champagne and you a believer that is royalty i don't care how many people in your family have not become successes there is an anointing that will come upon you it will set you on high i tell you those of you out can you pray in the spirit for one minute 
Pray in the spirit. You have been taught. You know the power of prayer. Come on, pray. In the name of Jesus. Powerful. We are releasing you as an infant of fire. I tell you, you will change. You will shape history. You will shape history. I am confident. The word of God is strong in you. The word of God is strong in you. The word of God is strong in you. Yes, students, listen to me. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen. I'm talking to you with all my heart. You have had teachings on faith. True or false? True or false? You have had teachings on the grace of God. You have had teachings on the fear of the Lord. You have had teachings on character. The Bible says he gave unto some apostles, prophets, by the ministry of the servants of God for years, some of you, you have been built in the word of God. I assure you, that word will keep you. Are you listening to me? Look at me. Now you know success is not a mistake. True or false? Who is still trying to learn? Now you know that there is an operation of the word of God in you. Now you know that you don't just have a certificate. You have an anointing. That you are being raised up with Christ. This is not about man of God. This is not about woman of God. You will go and meet your colleagues who have spent their days in the university just reading and living for Satan. Refuse to mix up with them. You may be a fanatic, but I tell you, if you are ashamed of the word of God, you will be a failure in life. He said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Our fathers, the holy men of faith, kept this word and they used it to change history are you listening to me great men received inventions from this word great men had model families from this word we have taught you things about family life we have taught you things about about the principles of god relationship money kingdom economics you have no excuse to fail in life through tears we have labored in the word and in prayer for you to build you let me tell you something i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to build you and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified keep the principles you have had some of you you may not see any results yet but i want to pray for you hallelujah i want to pray for you i want to pray that god will put a blessing upon your life listen listen it would take you from your village to shake the nations i tell you this and there is an anointing that can pick a man i have found my servant david and with my holy oil from the wilderness to Saul's throne from the wilderness there is an anointing that took esther from her hamlet not known by anyone you may be lost in this crowd right now for some of you, you will be great apostles. For some of you, you will be men and women of God, bishops. Many of you will be the next Amphi McPherson's. Many of you will be the next business moguls. I'm not motivating you. But you must keep the word of God. Listen to me. Many graduates come out with excitement after six months. What they call faith six months earlier now becomes foolishness because of the reality of what is happening look at the mess and the nonsense that is going on in abuja when you preach to many people in abuja what i'm preaching to you some of you live there they'll just laugh and say forget jare leave all those your childishness let's face what reality tell them my bible says i am the truth and i am reality 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 is everything that is in the word of god you will not beg for food. 
Ladies, no barrenness. No. That subject is gone forever. I don't care what your past is. That's why we are settling it here. Are you ready? We are going to pray for you. And bless you. And pray that the grace of God will come upon you. Deuteronomy. I first want to bless you with the blessings that the Jews used to bless their people with. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Deuteronomy 28. I just want you to shout Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name that is above all names. Father, I pray that as I pronounce these blessings upon your sons and daughters, let the angels that signify these words, let the angels that make this happen, make it happen for them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are blessed in the city. Amen. You are blessed in the field. Blessed is the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle the increase of your cows and the flocks of your sheep blessed is your basket and your kneading trough blessed shall thou be when you come in and blessed shall thou be when you go out the Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face they shall come out in one way but they shall flee in seven ways the Lord shall command a blessing upon your storehouse you shall lend to nations you will not borrow from anyone I prophesy unto you you are the head and not the tail you are above and not beneath I call your husbands I call your wives I call your children I call your prosperity in the name of Jesus whatever limitation is upon your life let it be broken now in the name of Jesus cultural limitation be broken in the name of Jesus territorial limitation be broken in the name of Jesus false mindsets be broken in the name of Jesus I command that you are prosperous in the name of Jesus you will not beg on the streets of Nigeria I forbid you I command jobs to be waiting for you I command ideas to come upon you for those of you who are going into ministry I pray that you will not mislead God's people in the name of Jesus that apostles will come out of you prophets will come out of you evangelists will come out of you teachers of the world will come out of you pastors will come out of you in the name of Jesus ladies I bless your womb no barrenness you will not give birth to abnormal children in the name of Jesus hallelujah listen the guys I want to pray for you that spirit that comes upon men listen that makes them wild fathers that spirit that can come upon a young man who is well behaved right now but 10 years later he has become a source of terror to his wife and children let that spirit never come upon you in the name of Jesus you will be model fathers I prophesy model fathers in the name of Jesus sisters you'll be model mothers you will raise children after the fear of the Lord in the name of Jesus I prophesy to the earth Job said as for the earth out of it comes bread as a servant of the living God I kneel down upon this earth I invoke the bread that is upon the earth I command it to come to your life I I kneel down I invoke it in the name of Jesus I command bread upon the earth you will not beg for bread you will not beg for bread you will not beg for bread hallelujah that spirit listen of untimely death that a graduate comes to collect his certificate and as he's going back in the name that is above all names 
I command by the anointing of the Holy Ghost every spirit of death upon your life be lifted forever in the name of Jesus hallelujah every terminal disease whether it's SS whatever kind of things you inherited right now it falls in this place in the name of Jesus Amen. hallelujah I command that the God Father himself the one who can connect men higher the one who knows who is who in Abuja in Lagos in Jos, in Port Harcourt, my father and my maker I pray that God will connect you I call for your destiny help us 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah hallelujah for those of you look at me for those of you who are one leg in one leg out with God you are not strong in faith every little thing shakes you you cannot be a general that way I impart strength upon you no backsliding in the name of Jesus no backsliding in the name of Jesus no backsliding now I want to release something upon you listen to me every time listen every ministry that God calls has certain anointings are you listening to me every ministry that God calls has certain anointings when God called and established this ministry there are certain graces I have seen these graces in my life the ministers have seen it in their life I have preached about it many people laughed at me when I was saying it hallelujah there is a compelling power I call it an akazo ay, 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 ay. my God I pray that you make your people believe this there is an anointing for wealth and prosperity hear me no this one will come with an impartation there is an anointing for faith God gave me the spirit of faith in the name that is above if I be a servant of God at the wind of the spirit right now let it blow 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 the gift of faith the presence of God Anakazo the compelling power it will compel in Nigeria it will compel in South Africa in UK everywhere I impart it upon you. Let it come as a mantle, as a cloak upon your life, upon your spirit. The favor anointing the favor anointing that came upon Esther the favor anointing in the name that I, the name of the Lord Jesus I command right now you need favor in Nigeria you need favor in Nigeria lift your hands for now yes students my father and my God let a mantle of favor receive it receive it receive it favor i invoke it from the realm of the spirit from the realm of the spirit i separate you from evil i separate you from accidents i separate you from fire disaster in the name of jesus I separate you from the activities of terrorists. 
in the name of Jesus thou shall not fear go and prosper in business go and prosper in business go and prosper on your job go and prosper in ministry go and prosper in the name of Jesus hallelujah God is sending many of us listen we have spoke about we've spoken about kingdom advancement some of you are going into family life some of you into the media some of you into ministry some of you into education wherever you are you are an ambassador you are an ambassador you represent the heavens you represent the heavens my god bless you the god of jacob bless you the one who you honored while on campus may he honor you in the name of the lord jesus go and be a light some of you will go outside this nation i command doors of nations to be open for you in the name of the lord jesus for those of you who are still confused listen about your purpose and what god has called you to do between now and the next 14 days i prophesy that by divine encounters let there be supernatural clarity in the name of jesus none of you will make mistakes in your life not with your job or your ministry or marriage or any of such things in the name of the lord jesus Amen. look at me say i'm victorious, I'm victorious. say I know, I know the word of god i'm a champion i'm a, champion. I'm a, winner. I'm a winner say I'm born, I'm born again the spirit of life is in me I am great. I will shake this nation. I will shake Africa with the light of God and with the power of God's word. Say in the name of Jesus, my words are prophetic. My words are creative. I call for blessings. I call for grace. I call for greatness. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatsoever has not been planted by God is uprooted. The favor of God is upon me. Is upon me. Give God a shout of praise. Now, listen to me according to the measure of grace that has been given we graduate you because see this is a prophetic statement there are some of you that have issues that humanly speaking but according to the order of grace the bible says whosoever ministers let him minister according to the measure of grace according to the measure and the order of grace that god has given i command this night, this night, this night, in the presence of God who is able to do all things and his holy angels who are mighty, we graduate you from Amadubello University. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Hear me, hear me. By this statement, I command courses to be waived. Let missing scripts be found. Let policies change. In the name of Jesus. For the papers you have written that you know except God helps you. There is a name the Holy Ghost is called. The helper. My father, let your spirit help the sons of the kingdom. Receive the help of the Lord. And for the remaining papers you have to write. Look at me. And Samson said, Oh Lord, let my hair grow this one time. And let me push. The Bible says he pushed. There are some CGPS right now. I command that class rise to 2-2. Two -two. I command 2-2. Two -two. Rise to 2-1. I command 2-1. 
rise to first class in the name of Jesus. In your final exam, let there be a harvest of five points. Let there be a harvest of five points. Let there be a harvest of five points. A harvest of five points. I pray for your project. Every supervisor, as long as he's under heaven, if the cloud is above him, every supervisor that will not let you go, I will not work on your project. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, I command him to let you go in the name of Jesus. And every lecturer that vows that he must sleep with you before you pass, let the Lord compel him to mark your project and let you go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I prophesy unto you. I pray. There are many of you, you have not even started your project. You have no idea whatsoever. Kabate kapa. Reketeko sopatia. Mampate kaproskopa. Rakata balikepai. But there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration, the unction, the anointing, the bread, the audacity, the capacity of the spirit. Make them of understanding. I program your spirit to succeed, to understand in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every sickness that we want to stop you in the name of Jesus. Some of you need finances for your project. That's what is stopping you. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. From whence cometh my help? I command right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The ravens came and fed Elijah. I command men who will serve as the ravens that will come to feed you. Receive supply. Receive supply. In the name of Jesus. Say I'm above. Say I'm above. In the name of Jesus. I like you. To turn around and hug 10 people and tell them congratulations. It's great to be a graduate. Now go back to your seat victoriously. Go back to your seat victoriously. I see the glory of the Lord. See the favor of the Lord. The favor of the Lord is risen upon me. Arise, shine, my light is gone. I see the favor of the Lord is risen upon me. God a hand clap please <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah so you are victorious are you listening to me you are successful you are above you are above the grace of God is upon you you are a bank of the anointing Walk in this consciousness. Walk in this grace. Listen. And go and teach others. Go and teach others. Hallelujah. Give God a shout of praise. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God. Our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him. 
that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye!